Join us tonight as we go behind the music of popular band Scuba. Scuba started in the early 90s as the brainchild of one Stephen M. Soka, a young man who wanted to be a swimmer, but he didn't like the water. So like most kids his age, Stephen Soka started a boy band, which he called Scuba. Scuba hit the scene like a rabid tornado just when the sun was rising most of all. Scuba was characterized by laid-back studio sessions. Scuba's first album, appropriately titled with tongue firmly planted in cheap, Dive In, burned up the charts despite the severe lack of interest displayed during the photo shoot of the album. Scuba was a really interesting band. I mean, they were kind of, you know, ahead of their time in that they were playing the same music that everyone else was. And most musicians that day, they were playing different music. So it was actually kind of the regional thing in a weird kind of a way. Things started to turn upside down pretty quickly for Scuba as Steven Soka's ego cast a large shadow over their success. Steven Soka began to buy himself expensive floor tiles shaped in maps of popular European cities. Large giant heads that he thought resembled himself. Huge freaking ferris wheels to amuse himself all day. Steven Soka began to hang out with the wrong kind of crowd. Pretty soon, Scuba, the band, could barely keep their heads above the hedges. And controversy struck as it turned out one of their big hits, Where the Lanes Have No Name, was a ripoff of a popular U2 song with a pretty similar sounding title. Everything was great when they thought they were good, but uh, you know, how do you say, when you found out they were huge frauds. It kind of changed the perspective on everything. You know, they were not playing their own instruments. Steven Soka was really stealing his songs from artists that uh, everyone had heard of, so it wasn't really going too well. But it's a shame, because they seemed like nice people. <laughs> 